everybody dr rick dropping in you're gonna to have to excuse my voice uh been a long day but I, I had to drop in on this one uh this is another segment of the black voice coming at you from h-town where we do everything melanated uh this is about melanated influence melanated power giving uh melanated voices an amplified uh experience and today i want to talk to you about manhood versus moistness uh i've been talking about this for a long time and my my problem as a 60s kid uh born in the 60s grew up in the 70s uh high school in the 80s um college in the 80s um my perspective of manhood, I think, is considered nowadays traditional and not so much in the sense of traditional being wrong or right, but traditional just being a time where people thought differently. And so how I view manhood now isn't uh, necessarily considered the holistic observation or expression of manhood because now we've explored different possibilities of presentation men are constantly being told to get in touch with their feminine side and while men are to be in touch with their feminine side that should not be an outward expression for everybody to experience the uh, uh, capacity for men to explore their femininity is for them to put down their swords when they get home from being a warrior every day see we're supposed to be going out we're supposed to be uh gathering hunting uh waging war against the things that could be dangerous for our family, uh, creating a capacity to pro provide for our family, to protect our family. We're out warring. When we come home, that sword and that aggression doesn't work well in the home. And that's the masculinity, the providing, the protecting, the leading, the willing to sacrifice. That's the masculinity we show the world. Not always in aggression, not always in violence, but always in an unyielding stance to present ourselves as a force to be reckoned with when it comes to dealing with our people, our children, our wives, our communities. When we go into the home, we need to be able to be soft. We need to be able to love. We need to be able to nurture. We need to be able to hold and show affection. That's when our feminine side comes in and that's still an expression of masculinity. It's just in a softer way. So there, this, this idea of, and, and, and I know that I, I jumped on and I talked about the whole finger polish and pearls and all this stuff and everybody's talking about what well, men did this back then and, and and what I'm what I guess we understand what the presentation and observation is for uh, true masculinity what a man is perceived like there are certain thing a man uh, there are certain things that a man will do or a man will wear that will immediately signal to a woman he might be cool to hang around but I wouldn't trust him to protect me he may be cool to hang around but i'm not going to follow him as he pursues a vision because i can't be sure of my safety and security and so then that tells me that there is a universal instinctive almost genealogically driven understanding of what real manhood is now we have reached a point in a place where everything is live and let live the pos the problem with live and let live is that it doesn't fun function well in social environments and being that we are mammals we are social creatures meaning that we function better in collaboration and collective unity in in in, in achieving a common goal uh, these different enclaves, these different communities, these different spectrums are all a part of a larger society. Well, when you operate within a society, there are rules that govern the behavior within the society. There's a natural expression of roles. It is understood who does what. And when it isn't done, there's an understanding of the consequence. In, 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 in the world, in, in the natural world where there hasn't been an inundation of influence, where creatures are still behaving the way they are designed to behave falling out of the social lineup or being anti-social in your behavior can mean death in a pride alliance in a pack of wolves in a herd of elephants on down the line that's social order and in part of the social order when it comes to us as men 
is to function as protectors, is to function as providers, is to function as prophets, priests, and those who lift and elevate those under our cover. That's what we do. And we do it from a place of man. And one of the things that, speaking of lion, one of the things that a lion has that is an extremely powerful force is before you ever have to deal with a lion physically, you have to deal with the force of its roar. It's me they measured lions versus tigers, and even though tigers are bigger, a lion has a more forceful roar and can be healed, heard at further distances. That's the first uh, line of defense to know you're entering into a lion's domain. You probably want to go another direction, right? Long before you have to face down with something that's probably going to destroy you in one swipe or one bite, you literally get a warning. Hey, look, this ain't what you want. That's why men's voices are deeper than women's. A deeper voice presents a dark, a deeper vibration, which is something to be reckoned with. So again, um, we have to be willing to um, we have to be willing to sit up and say, "Hey." Is this what we were supposed to be presenting? Is this what we're supposed to be doing? Is this how we're supposed to be carrying ourselves? Is this how we're supposed to be moving? Are we functioning at our highest? Step? Moistness. When I talk about moistness, moistness is more along the line of these guys who have very uh, uh, clear feminine tendencies, want to argue about everything word for word on everything will get on and go toe to toe with a woman for 25 exchanges on a post that uh you know moving and acting out of their emotions instead of sitting up and managing their emotions just so many different things that you see and then obviously there's the expression of femininity in the way they carry themselves and where they move and how they act the problem is that presentation does not bode well for those who are observing us and determining how weak we are and how vulnerable we are and how exposed we are. It doesn't care how smart our women, it, it doesn't matter how smart our women are. It doesn't matter how affluent our women are. If they, if it, it, it comes to a point where it looks like the men are not capable or willing to protect them, it becomes a problem. And so what do we do? We have to really and truly visit and examine what we are supposed to be, who we're supposed to be, and act accordingly. And so that's it for now, man. But I'm just like, I'm so tired of seeing guys and, and women stop applauding that. Stop applauding moist behavior. Stop applauding moist presentations. Stop sitting up and saying it's just an expression. What you don't realize is that you have a freedom to do a bunch of different things, but there is a consequence that comes with the freedom that you have to be aware of. What are you giving up for that freedom? So then freedom isn't really free because you're sacrificing something. We need our men to be men. We need our men to stop wearing things and and, and I seen a whole group of boys look like they were part of the football team walking down a hotel room. I'm pretty sure they was at a track meet or something like that. All of them with pajamas on with the ass out. Yeah, and the first thing everybody's going to say, well, Prince did it. Ain't but one of that dude, he was some freaking anomaly who was extremely gifted. And if he wasn't that musically gifted, it would have been a problem. And still... Nobody's going to sit up and go, hey, Prince, come help me, come protect me. I don't know what the guy can do with his hands or whatever, but that's not the image I'm looking for when I want somebody to roll up and throw down with me. Now, if I want a great concert and I want all that, great. But those aren't the men that people are looking at to turn things around. And, and there's only a handful of guys that are that gifted that they bless us in ways that cause us to overlook their presentation. And, and, and it's been said, and I, I am not going to deny it. Prince is the only dude that you can see in a lace blouse with eyeshadow on that will take your girl. And that's that. But at the same time, him getting the girl doesn't mean that he's the presentation of what we need as a man. Uh, and I am an unbelievable Prince fan have been since the 70s. But look, we've got work to do.
That's all I can say. We got work to do. Um, I just had to drop that. I'm about to jump off of here. Look, it's another beautiful day. Uh, sending our love to my melanated family. Uh, believe. That's what I'm going to leave you with. Believe. Believe that something greater is possible. And let's explore what that means. On that note, I'm out of here. Take care.